right, <clears throat> so we are live on YouTube. Welcome everybody to our weekly IT Security Labs live stream. Today I'm going to try something new for us. Since we have an hour, I chose a machine called Lazy Sys Admin that was posted by someone on Vaughnhub. And this machine is supposed to help us with getting ready for the OSCP and all that stuff. So that's the machine that we're going to do today. First thing that we need to do is download this machine uh, to our machine. And today I'm going to show you sort of um, part of what I do when I'm working on these vulnerable machines and practicing. So you get to see me live right here, um, attack some machines. So I'm just waiting for my download. I downloaded using the Google Drive. So as soon as the download is done, we're going to be attacking this machine live so i haven't done a live demo where i'm actually uh trying to get root but i think this is going to be a great one for us to practice then hopefully we can be done very quickly and if you have any sort of uh suggestions for us to attack this machine please let me know in the comments i have my own methodology when it comes to um attacking machines uh say on hack the box or vaughn hub so I'll be curious as I do it live, uh, what other people say here. Let me just uh, check my stream here on my phone, make sure that it's going well. That's the way I know that we are live. And I'm waiting for this to download so I can show you the process as well. Awesome. And, um, let me also let others know on our Facebook group. I see we have four people who just joined us. Thank you for joining us. Um, let's let others know on our Facebook group that, that today we actually have a live stream where we are actually going to attack a live machine and see our methodology, which is awesome. So if you are here and you're regular, please uh, let us know. Just say hi in the comments. And if you're new as well, let us know. We'll be curious to see... Um, who always here? Let's, let's let people know. Hey, Faud, how, how is it going? Welcome to our weekly live stream. Just give me one minute here. All right. So thank you all for joining. If you are just uh, a new person here, this is the IT Security Labs, and we focus on two things, um, both on cybersecurity, defending your infrastructure, which is um, videos that we make about monitoring your systems, and another passion of mine is uh, sort of offensive security. That is uh, being able to break into things and find out what is wrong with them. Uh, it's very interesting and it's very fascinating. We have a team uh, on Hack the Box and every week we pick an easy machine pretty much and we attack it and we find out uh, what we can do with uh, the machine. So today's machine is just sort of a practice for us. I just wanted to show you guys sort of uh, my thought process is I go through machines, um, what I do. And if you have any uh, questions, please let me know in the chat. I'll be here. So without wasting everybody's time, let's just get started here. So if you go to vaunhub.com, we have a machine called Lazy Sys Admin one This is a machine that was made by someone who was working on the OSCP. And the story behind it is that they found out that people overthink things, uh, but they don't. They forget about the lazy sysadmin who is going to hopefully make mistakes. So this machine, we don't expect it to be hard. And our goal is to load it in our, let me just show you here. Let's load this machine in our um, Kali Linux. 
I mean, uh, in our v v VMware Fusion. If you don't have VMware Fusion, you can use VirtualBox. I have both, as you can see, but I choose uh, VMware Fusion because um, that's what I just use with my Kali. I just wanted them to be on the same place. When you download it in VMware Fusion, all you need to do is just do a file, new virtual machine, and then say uh, here, import an existing machine then continue. Um, I can choose a file here. Then if you go to your downloads, it'll, it should be there. And then you can open it. So that's all you do. And once you open it, it will show up here. Let's cancel here because I already have mine here. So I don't waste your time. But what we're doing is we're going to start this machine. And when you start it, you probably won't know what IP address it is. Uh, depending on your systems, uh, you can go to your DHCP server and try to see uh, what IP was assigned to this machine. Uh, you can do an NMAP scan, net discover. People do all kinds of things, right? To try to find out what IP address is this machine going to get. Sometimes uh, the interface here would tell us, for example, if I go to my settings network, it says it's on my Wi-Fi, it's 192.168.5.59. So this is my way of finding out what IP address was assigned to this machine here. I may also this is a fan of my work. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right. So now that we know it's uh, on, uh, on our IP address, see, I got distracted. Uh, 15, 59, let's go to Kali and get started. Because I don't like to waste time here. I uh, was just playing with Spada. So my Kali are still sign in with a normal user. Then um, I have to become root. I just like that idea. So let's ping the machine. Dot 59. All right, so it looks like it's working. We have connectivity there. Uh, if I don't forget by the end of um, this, Hacking experience, I'm going to show you what my detection engines might have found out. Was I'm monitoring all the network activity in this lab where I'm doing this stuff? So if possible, my uh, SIM solution should pick up all my scans and everything. Then we can go and see if uh, what that looks like on a network if I don't forget about it. All right, so <clears throat> first thing whether I'm working on Hack the Box or Vaughn Hub is I have this folder called machines. In here, you'll see that the, here are some machines that I've worked on. Uh, most of them are active hex the box machines. If I go in any of these machines, these are folders with all my stuff. I like to keep my stuff in there. So for this one, I will make a directory called lazy sys, sysadmin, okay. Let's go in that directory. And from here, that's where I get started, right? And I posted in our Facebook group, our methodology that I actually have adopted. Uh, I don't know if you saw it, but uh, there's a nice PDF document with a methodology of what we, we can do and when to get started. Uh, in fact, let me pull it up here so people can see it. And I can show you how I'm using it that way. But while it's doing that, let's say um, I can put it while after I start my nmap. So I do it my nmap minus sv for service version minus sc to find my saved scripts. Um, I'm just scanning the top 1000 ports. So let me just output it to a file called nmap. The, since it's already in my lazy sysadmin folder, I kind of know what it, the nmap folder look has. Uh, come on. Okay, something happened here. My shell is right here. <laughs> so output it to a folder called, I mean a file called nmap. Uh, nmap.txt maybe. I know, just nmap. Was it to be nmap.nmap? And then uh, 192.168.5.5. 59 so 
now we just run our end map we're trying to find out what ports are running what is there what can we see from this system this is sort of my methodology and while nmap is running uh that is not right let's do a ping 192.168.5.59 is it 59 so we can get there we should be able to run our nmap Right, let's let let's let it run and while it's running there i also pulled up uh spotter spotter is a really nice tool that does my scanning oh that is not, that is not true 192.168.5.59 let's see um let's do that let me mess with the network here. Let's say share with my Mac, then I will put it back to my network adapter. And this is the beauty of live streams, right? You get to see that these things don't just work. When we, um, when we make those videos about hacking, things like this happen. So let's see if it, it will take an IP this time. All right. So it says 59. Let's try it one more time. Maybe my firewall is blocking it in my lab. So let's see. ABB0. Is that the settings i mean now checking the mac address here let's see oh no that is not the one all right let me check my um dhcp server and make sure that this actually got the correct ip address so with um with this system here you should be able to um either use a local IP, usually I use PFSense, but today, since I want to detect it in my house, I'm going to, I'm going to try to put it in a network in my full lab so I can see the attacks happening, right, for good detection. All right. If it doesn't work, then we can try it next time but it should work. Mm, let's do this. Let's put it right here. Let me just check here to make sure that we can sign in. Then we can have some fun. I put in some notes so this can go very quickly in case of something like this. So let's see. Um, come on. All right, I'm signing into my DHCP server. And into this machine as well. So let's see that. If I do an IPA with my user, oh, it's 69. Okay. All right. Now you know that I have that user that I know can get in there. Now let's go to our Kali and get, get going. That was not a correct IP. So now it's 69. I was going to sign into my DHCP server if that. Give me a wrong one. Sixty nine. Okay. Also, you're going to see the process here then. If you know how to use uh, 
nmap and everything so nmap is going to gather all of our data and everything that's uh, on that on our target then i'm also going to use um sparta and the reason why i use sparta a lot is um you it gives you everything in one place and it, it's really 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 good for that so let's fire up sparta and figure out why nmap is doing that uh let's say the mod easy let's just submit that So we're going to fire up Sparta as well and make sure that we can find things. And Sparta does a lot of heavy lifting for us, like finds some random uh, vulnerabilities and everything. So that's why I really like Sparta. But uh, at the same time, let's go here and find out why we can get, not get there. So now let's ping 192.168.5.69. We might have to restart the machine if it's not responding to that IP. In that case, oh, yeah, it's saying unreachable. We just, uh, oh, we forgot to start it up, of course. Once it comes back up, we should be able to uh, run our spot again and NMAP. While those uh, tools are, while studying, let's talk about the methodology, which is what I wanted to talk to you about. So I run my NMAP, I find out, um, about say port 80 if i find port 80 running i'm going to find out what kind of website is it is it uh an apache website is it um say wordpress and that determines what what to do is it a windows uh, iss server and that actually determines where, where we can go all right so since we are, it's responding now let's run our end map one more time uh, someone said to add pn to the nmap command. Oh, okay. I don't need normally add pn. I usually add t4 to make it go faster. But this one, I don't think it will, it will, it will take that long. Um, for here, all right. So our nmap completed finally. And then we see all these ports. Usually I like to see less ports. If I see a lot, um, I know that there's more work to be done, a lot of enumeration. But um, you can see right away that we have SMB running here, which is awesome. With SMB, we can actually uh, get in there. So I would have, I know right at the back of my head, I need to check for SMB anonymous uh, login at some point. I see port 22 is open. You see the version of Ubuntu, which is um, all really good information. Uh, usually I start from the top going down one at a time SSH unless if it's an old version of SSH usually they you don't get in using SSH in most boxes at least that I uh, I've used so well before we do that somebody said time to add spider to the list all right yeah you need to add, you have spider to the list so let's see let's see if we can start spider from the beginning so I can run Sparta while I do my the enumeration. You want to do a lot of things at the same time. And right now I'm doing way more. Like I'm talking, I'm trying to run this. So you can just come here and say Sparta. And you see why I run Sparta. Sparta and Nikto, those are my favorites. I, I, I usually run one or the other. I don't run both. So if you search for Sparta or type Sparta in the terminal, it will launch Sparta for you. Then uh, once you get here, let's add our target, 192.168.5.59. Uh, let's yeah, let's leave it on easy. Run nmap host discovery. Uh, yeah, if we didn't run nmap, we would run this, but I will leave it like that. So you can see, it's running in the background as well. Uh, when when it finds stuff, it's going to be listed here for us and some CVs if he finds any and notes. So let's let Sparta run in the background. Uh, and while it's running, let's come back here. We have port 80 and here's a, a version of Apache. It looks like a newer version of Apache anyway. So let's uh, fire up on our port 80. Uh, if we go to 192.168.5.69, I was testing it here. This is our site that's being hosted there. And usually I like to to just take a look at the site what is what is really running there um how is it going 
And if you just joined us, we are trying to do a live hacking demo here so you can uh, see what it looks like for somebody like me uh, when I'm uh, trying to get root on machines. This is this is a machine from Vaughn Hub and it's called Lazy Sysadmin. I downloaded it from here. And now we just fired Nmap. We found out that we've put 80. We came here. Uh, the PDF with the methodology is on uh, our... Um, it's on our... Um, uh, Facebook page, but I can show you what it looks like here. Okay. This is this is the methodology, right? Um, we start with enumeration. It says enumerate, enumerate, enumerate. I'm not going to waste too much time here. If we have SMB services, it tells us which commands to run and the syntax to run them. Um, right now we have port 80 open. So we can scan for that. We can run Nikto against it. We can run all these tools, including a wait list. So this one is in our um, Facebook group uh, in the documents section. So if I get stuck and I don't know what to do with the service, I will show you what I will use this one for. But for now, I know what to do with port 80. Uh, first thing is I try to poke around the site. My, my mind on my SQL, okay, is that supposed to be a hint? Uh, let's say learn more. It doesn't respond to anything. These learn more buttons don't work. So we look for anything that might uh, let us in, any version powered by, maybe this might help. We don't know. So we look and try to see, do we have any, so if, if it's a website about a company, we are looking for, uh, if it's a website about a company, we are looking for, say, a directory, an employee list. Can we make a list of um, usernames and passwords? Maybe can we make a list of usernames from the normal syntax? If a website is full usernames and passwords, that's what you do. Something here. This thing is not responding to anything. I cannot click on any of this. Oh, except for the this one. Let's view page source. I like to come in here because uh, on this capture the flags, you see all kinds of things in the source here. You might see somebody might have, say, um, some notes about um how they configured the site you might see maybe if they are running any javascript that's funny looking you might be able to investigate so it's good to always right click and view page source even though uh, we don't see anything here and while we were poking around spider has been working for us so let's see so it hasn't found anything yet let's let, let's let it run in the background next time i will run it before we start the stream so we can see what it looks like. All right, so we have put 80 and we, we, we're poking with it. We didn't find anything. Uh, let's forget that spot is running right now. What do we do next? Uh, we move on. So put 80, we went there. There is no username, employee. We couldn't find really anything interesting. Um, another one is if you don't know, you can just copy this. Actually, you can just use search exploit to see if that, that version of Apache is, is vulnerable. Um, so what you can do is you can say, if you don't know, or you can just, we have 2.7. So I highly doubt that you see anything here. As you can see, we have too many results. 2.7, can you see anything in there for 2.7? Yeah. It's a um, cross-site scripting and a denial of service. That doesn't look interesting. I'm looking for something like a remote code execution when I'm looking for uh, a search exploit here. I'm looking for something fun like this one. This buffer overflow, we used it uh, in a machine, uh, one of the newer machines on Hack the Box uh, a few weeks ago. So if, if you... If, if you know the version of Apache, you look for search exploit, you might find a nice um, Metasploit module that you can just fire up and be done. Somebody says, did I put it? Oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> no, no, I'm not finding anything. Thank you. That's This is why uh, I put my IP address as 59 here instead of 69. So I'm looking for, I'm probably scanning a host in, 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 my, in my network. That doesn't have anything. Thank you for that.
All right, now we are firing it on our <laughs> correct IP address. Thank you for that. Ah, uh, yeah, now we're finding results. So we have port 80. The good thing about Sparta is, as you can see, I have a Nikto tab here. It's already finding stuff for me. Uh, so I don't have to find Nikto in a separate tab. Uh, I'm already seeing things that are very, very juicy and interesting. So let's give this a minute so I, so, so I can go back to my original train of thought here. So we said we can do a search exploit and if we don't find anything there, um, we go, we move on and say, okay, we went to port 80, we couldn't find anything. You can move on or you can wait for other tools like Sparta, which are already finding some stuff uh, about our, our, our target. But if you wanted to say, okay, I'll come back to that, but I'm interested in this um, SMB here, uh, 139 TCP. I happen to know that this is uh, a very interesting one. F two things. First thing that I do when I find Samba is I try to sign in as anonymous. I try to find out if there's any vulnerability with that Samba. All right. I'll... <laughs> I'll, 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 add, I'll, I'll add that PDF uh, somewhere. Um, let's see. I, I, might, I might upload it to my site or my GitHub. I'm working on a place where I can similarly add. Some people are saying, where can they find the uh, PDF? I will, I'll try to see where I can share that with. Somebody probably has it somewhere. I downloaded it a while ago somewhere on the internet. It's not my original one. All right, so we have port 139. We have Samba, but... Wait a second. This is the trouble with. I think Alexander is close to our Sparta, but um, I will run it again anyway. Let's go back and uh, find out what we have on our results. I, I said I found out that we have a Samba server. So two things that I do is sign in as anonymous, or I can just uh, try to find out if the version is vulnerable to any uh, attacks. 5.69. If it is vulnerable, then we can move on. Otherwise, uh, in this case, we have a lot of things going on. Uh, I know that our port 80 has a bunch of things that we can work on. I know that we also have um, a vulnerable Samba. So let's go to here and say, since I'm used to be a Windows system administrator, I still have my habits of going to File Explorer to uh, get to things because that's just uh, how I like to go about things. So let's try to get into that Samba share and see what is going on. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll share the PDF with you. Don't worry about it. All right, so let's uh, try to get into our SMB. SMB. This is easier for demonstration as well, right here. So, depending on how this is crafted, we can do an 192.168.5. Um, and from here, it just says we have a Samba. So before I even know what is there, I can just try to get in. If I didn't know, and if it didn't allow me here, I'll go back to my PDF. Uh, let me see. And I'll try to find out, okay, how do I enumerate SMB? So I do a command F, SMB. This is what we can do. So if you forget and you don't know how to get there, Here's, here's the syntax for us. So this is not like something you need to memorize. Uh, you can do SMB client and insert the IP address, or you can do the way I'm doing it in, in, the, um, in, the, in the tab. So it doesn't really matter 
But here are all the different ways you can enumerate SMBs. You really want to enumerate SMB, especially if you're running on a Windows server. On Hex, the box especially is notorious for giving you SMB on Windows. So you can you can do that where you can just run um, SMB uh, enumeration and uh, try to get in. But today, since I already know, let's let's see. We have a uh, print and share. Let's start with print. Can we get in there? Is anonymous connect? No. So we cannot get there. What about share? Is anonymous? Yes. So now we know we can get in here as uh, anonymous, which is interesting. I don't know why my spider keeps uh, shutting down, but uh, within spider, you can see that we have, we have a lot more things in there than, than what we have right now. Once you get into an SMB share, the one thing that you want to do is make sure you go through every single one of these folders. Uh, especially in Windows environments, you have a lot of layers and layer after layer after layer. The reason why I like to use File Explorer is because I can, I can easily get in one, dig through it, and exit and do it again and again and again and again. So in this case, um, I have this Apache website. I'm not seeing anything. The downside of doing it this way is if you don't have checked here or to see hidden files, you will not be able to see them. So you need to check this box here that says, yes, show me hidden files and I view hidden files. If you are doing it from the um, File Explorer, you can say ls minus la and all those uh, Linux commands that you can use. So that, that, would be, that would be just the easy one. But since I did a view hidden files here, now I can see that I have a to-do list. That is interesting. I have robots.txt, dist.txt. These are not normal files. Um, so let's start with the to-do to -do list here. Prevent users from being able to view the web route by using the local file browser. Okay. That's a to-do that they have. Robots.txt. Disallow this. And that, and that, and that. That that can be really good stuff because the moment you put things in robot.txt, you are telling me to go poking around. So that's what we have there for robots.txt. But uh, let's quickly uh, move on here. Um, old is 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 good. Sometimes uh, people who have things in there look for uh, backup. Uh, any file that is dot backup is also going to be good. We have a WordPress here which is uh, now, this is now becoming interesting, right? And let's see, uh, can we poke around here? License.txt, uh, readme.html. You really need to just um, dig, dig in and find out what is really going on in here. So that is not interesting. Let me see, what, 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 what did somebody say? All right, so people are talking about um, being able to see this file. All right, let's 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 go back here. Oh, we forgot dits. What's in there? All right, as you can see, remembering all these passwords. Okay, this is just ridiculous, right? You don't want people to <laughs> know a password in your uh, SMB share. So if you are a system administrator, don't, don't do this. You, you, don't, you really don't want to, to do this, right? Uh, so remember to remove this file and update your password after we push it to the server. Password is one, two, three, four, five. So what I'll do is I'll just copy that, go back to my terminal here. Um, this one. Then I can make a file called say passwords. This I do if I am assuming there's going to be more, then I can just come in here and say one, two, three, four, five. Escape. Whoa, whoa. So you get the idea. We save our password. Now we know that we found a um, password in one of these in the dits, the WordPress. So that's interesting. So let's go back to our WordPress and find out if there is a config file. 
So if you're working with WordPress, there are two things that you can do. Now that we know that there's a WordPress, you can run a tool called WP scan. We're not going to run it here because I don't want to waste too much time. It will not find anything for this target. Uh, but you can also try to log in. So what we are interested in here is uh, we have a WordPress login, WordPress config. Uh, this is a sample, but let's look into this one and see if we can find any users. And WordPress config files are like gold for you. If you ever find a WordPress config, config file, it will give you all the good stuff. Look at here. We found... Uh, <laughs> So it's the wp.config, uh, let's maximize that because this is where we have. So this is a file that a person who is poking around your website should not have access to. So we see that we have um, DB user. So this is a PHP admin uh, site, obviously, that we, that, that we can access. DB name, we have a name database called WordPress admin, found um, DB password. So that's a database uh, password that we can use to sign in. So that's interesting. So if user admin, we can see all the configuration here, which is very, very interesting. So we can try to sign in with that into our site to see if they have uh, a PHP my admin site. So let's go here and say, if you have worked with PHP slash PHP, my admin you can find this from let's say if you're blasting Durbuster, you if you run a Durbuster here you would have seen that this is the the case so our username is admin and our password change right here so let's copy this whole password here and sign in. Go. Is it case sensitive admin and paste? If it doesn't work, you try it again. So I'm in. I've seen a lot of machines that uh, will give you access to PHP, my admin. Two things that you can try to do here. Try to get some hashes if you can. If you can access the users part of the database, you should. If you can create users and give them permissions, you should. So those are the things that you can do once you get in here. So let's go to our WordPress and see if we can see other things, uh, users, WP users. We are interested in there. User login, can we see anything? No, it doesn't look like, um, we can, we can see the SQL here. We, can we run select commands? Can we create new users, user emails? All right. Uh, command denied to user admin. Okay, so it doesn't look like we have good permissions here. If we had, we'll be able to see um, different things. But this is where you go if you were, say, interested in looking at um, PHP my admin. But since we don't have that, uh, we need to go back to um, our stuff and see what else can we find out about um, our target here. Let's see. Somebody says, um, find print. Oh yeah, if you if you want to share any resources that we share on this channel, uh, please uh, feel free to do so. We we, we really don't uh, don't mind um, what 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 happens. All right, so we are not get, having any luck here, and I I want to end uh, this stream soon, but we know that we cannot get in there. So let's go back to the one thing that can help us, and this machine is called lazy sys admin for a reason right uh, this is where sort of like uh having that hacker mentality sort of comes in place we found the password earlier that was one two three four five and our admin here somehow happens to have the name togi 
MySQL 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And this is the capture the flag mentality, right? What, have, what, what do most people do when they're creating passwords and they're lazy? They put their name in the password. They put their child's name in the password. They use random things that they know, say their city, their name. So we saw that it's Togi MySQL 12345. There's a syntax right there. We still have the 12345 as part of our password. And this one is for MySQL. So let's try, and I know this annoys me every time I see it in machines, that this is a way to get in. Let's try Togi's our username and our password that we found earlier to go back to our system, our um, stuff that we found and try to sign in. We can try to sign into our WordPress site or we can try to sign in using SSH. It just happens for this machine, if we try to sign in as Togi, which is a username that I found from the WordPress site, and the password 12345, we are going to be able to get in. So if I do an SSH, at 192.168.5.0, Sixty-nine. Yes. One, two, three, four, five. Look, we are in. And I want to spend time here because this is the most ridiculous ways of getting into these machines. Is it's really capture the flag ish like, but at the same time, it is reasonable to say, okay, if I got these usernames and passwords, and knowing people, this has to be somebody's name. And Togi some, somehow happens to be the admin. And we can find this information somewhere else too. If we had maybe uh, in some cases uh, on Hex the Box, they will have that person's name, say, on the website. So instead of uh, being in, in that, in, in that, let's say, let's say if we wanted to visit the WordPress, WP, is it WP underscore admin? You know what? Let's find out. So the one part that I skipped that I always run is uh, I, I bust some directories to find out what directories are running there. 8.5.69. So I'm just going to show you quickly. This way I, I wouldn't be struggling like this. This is the quickest way. It's not the most reliable way for, with Derb, but at least you'll be able to see some directories very, very quickly. That's why I'm running it. So I have a slash WordPress or slash WP. So let's go there. There we go. Hello, my name is Togi. <laughs> Hello, my name is Togi. How many times are you going to tell us your name, Togi? We know we already know your name. We put in your password in WP right here. So if you didn't find his name here, you already saw it in the password that he created right there in, in a capital track. So we have Togi here. We have a password that was put um, in here in this. Says it. Remember to remove this file and update the password after we push it to the server. So you have a password, you have a user. Your job as um, somebody who's cracking these machines, make sure that you give those passwords combinations uh, usage. So we have Togi and 12345, and we were able to SSH as him. So from there, let me, let's go back here. So we have no business with this. Let's clean it up so we don't confuse ourselves too much. So now that we are in here, this is where the fun actually begins. Once you get in uh, as Togi and you found his password in SMB, you, 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 can, you can just do something like uh, 
sudo this is what i do no matter uh what machine i have on hackfreebox sudo mi minus l just to try to find out what can we do usually what i found on at least five machines on hackfreebox if, if they are li in linux i've seen this which pretty much means that we are part of the sudoers and this is the easiest way to become root that I found. That's why I always run it. If you do a sudo minus L, it says O O. That means I'm part of the sudoers. So I can do a sudo su and become root here. Pretty boring, right? Sometimes when you come here, it will have a, maybe some things that you can run. It will have maybe some commands that you can run. You want to come here and make sure that you run sudo minus L. In this case, <laughs> It's easy. So if you do a sudo su, we are root. So this was sort of like a boring machine, but at the same time, I think it's a it's an interesting machine. This person was going through the OSCP and they said that they got really bored or annoyed by the fact that they had the passwords right in front of them and they kept overthinking things. So the whole concept of this machine was let's not overthink things check your permissions first the moment you become um, a user on a machine see what you can and can't do in this case we could do we, could, we are part of the sudoers so if you were not thinking straight and you were just for uh, complicating things you would have come in here uh try to get your new linux, linux and host an smb server somewhere try to get in in here wasting time when you could have just checked here but I also wanted to share with you if I didn't have that easy way out, I have a goat milk privilege escalation. I don't know if you can see this, uh, but I, I can try. This has been God sent for me. Uh, let's zoom in so you can read it. This is like a step by step. Uh, this is from the got milk site i should probably have a better way for giving them uh, credit the reason why i keep it as a pdf is because it's easier for me to access i don't have to go to a site this is easy i can search in here but uh here are things that you can run after you become user you need to go and find out what's in the what version of things are you running you find out what version is it and what you want to find the version you go to google find out is it vulnerable if you don't have the kernel versions and it's not it's not a kernel exploit find the um, etc profile another dumb thing that i found a lot of uh, at least on two hex box machines that i did um i've done over 50 now they might have bash history there <laughs> like my last uh, one of the last machines i did a couple weeks ago they had bash history that was the only way to find out uh, about this docker container that's running on that machine so being able to find out uh, what variable is there, variables are running, uh, do they have bash history? Then if you really are stuck, you can go step by step. You, you're trying to see what is really running here. Uh, you want to see what is running as root. I've become lucky with cron jobs running a script, like a Python script or bash script as root. So much fun. Um, you, you, can, you, you, can, you can do a lot. And here are the links for where, where all this stuff is um, go to this blog here i have it bookmarked but also uh, i have this pdf that i um is pretty much a clone of the site it's just easier for me to access just in case um i don't want to be accessing the internet from my uh kali but yeah that's sort of like a kind of way of uh getting on this machine our idea was let's not overthink it things let's just um use what we have in this case we have togi who is putting his name everywhere on our wordpress site saying hello my name is togi uh we now know that togi also is the admin because he put it in the uh wordpress site is part of it was his name in the w the wordpress config right here uh we know that he also has a password one two three four five that we saw in the dits in smb so it's all about enumeration poke everything that you have and this machine should take you five minutes to do i hope you can do it better than me and the way i did it uh in this live stream and if this works next time i'll try to be 
more prepared to test my IP addresses so we can have another easy machine and explore something new. I'm hoping we can get a chance to use uh, things like SEWL to make a word list and um, a password file. Then we can try to crack passwords against the word list. We can try to uh, transfer files using uh, Python HTTP server, uh, using a Samba server to, from victim machine to the final machine and all those fun things. I think that um, it will be helpful for us to do those as well because there are some of those things that we take for granted uh, when we do this. All right. Does anyone have any questions for me in the comments there? Let me just check quick. Otherwise, I'm going to pull heck the box here. So we can uh, take a look at what we have. Oh, that, that one is, is just a... If you go to Google and say, literally like uh, got milk, it's a very, very uh, <laughs> popular site. This is, th that PDF is a clone of this site. This, so instead of that PDF, just come to this site. That's exactly what we have. Uh, I just keep it as a PDF because I don't want to be accessing the site. And just in case I don't have internet in my Kali, I like to have a PDF. Uh, is part of point of reference so I can copy and paste but that, that that PDF is pretty much this site here you will get used to this especially um the more machines you crack and you get stuck you'll come here and go through this list maybe a couple of times and once you do you, you get really use you used to it all right so on our hex the box let's go to my profile there is a machine that I think we should we should go for. Uh, it's called Open Keys. Unfortunately for uh, us, I couldn't wait. It was released yesterday. Um, I tried it a few hours after other people had uh, owned it. So so far, forty five people out of say three hundred thousand hack the box users have owned uh, both user and. Um, Oh, no, 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 that's wrong. That's my stats. I've owned four or five machines here. <laughs> Let's go back and see how many people. Actually, now this is the, these are the right numbers. 149 user owns 136 um, system owns. By the time I owned this machine, there were less than 100 people who had uh, owned it. It's, it. it's a really, really wonderful machine. I, I think it's fun. Without spoiling it for anyone, I think it's an awesome machine. If you follow the methodology that we did here where you, you do your normal scans, you scan, you find things. If you find a website, make sure to poke around that website. Um, you run your sputter, always run sputter, and go through your sputter results. I didn't get a chance to go through sputter results today because of the little snake that happens, but go through your sputter results carefully if, he has, if, he had, if, if you have any interesting uh, CVEs, because Spada is going to show you some CVEs, go and Google them. Find the uh, proof of concept. Uh, how do you attack them and throw them on, on the machine? So this week, I think that for our team, we should aim at all of us um, getting open keys. It's a very simple machine. It should be done in less than... I think it should be done in less than two hours. In an hour and a half, 90 minutes, you should be done with this machine if you get stuck. Without spoiling it, that's all I can tell you. And if you get stuck, um, reach out to me on our Discord channel. Um, I can uh, point you in the right direction. It's a, it's a, it's a relatively fun machine. I have, I have my notes here that I'll be happy to share with everybody later when this machine is retired. I will make, so right now I'm going to make a video walkthrough then put it uh, on private for a long time. When this machine gets released, I'll just make it private. I mean, public on um, YouTube. So thank you for joining this week. Uh, I hope you can get a chance to attack open keys. I hope you learned a thing or two from our lazy admin machine. Next time, if we're going to do a live stream, 
I will make sure that um, we can make it more informative. So I will probably practice it ahead of time so I can show you more things like sputter and everything. But I hope you can see the methodology and hopefully um, you learn something. If you haven't subscribed, please uh, subscribe to my channel. It helps. I think it helps YouTube suggest this content to other people as well. And it also shows that um, people are actually paying attention to the stuff that I'm working on. Otherwise, um, I will see you guys next week, same time, 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. Have a good one.